City Botanical Center, Rock Island, Illinois, and I'm here with Dar Dale Frells, and he is, even though he lives in Illinois, he's a member of the Minnesota Garden Railroad Society, and I got my button on to represent us, and we're here at the Quad City Botanical Center and at the Heartland Central. The Heartland Central Garden Railroad. Just go through some of the uh, layout here before we do the uh, video, or the uh, cab ride videos. What we're looking at here is the Heartland Central here in Rock Island at the Quad City Botanical Center. There's approximately 820 feet of track. This, uh, that, that track is divided up into four loops which are interconnectable so that you can combine one to two, two to three, three to four, or you can put, put them all together in one and run one train over the entire layout and have it come back over and start it over again. When I say entire, I'm talking about with a few exceptions, very few. What we try to do is run two to three trains at a time uh, for guest uh, interest. We have a lot of other little features included, and uh, we do run track power. What kind of track do you have? Pardon? What kind of track? We're talking about uh, Aristo mostly Aristo and LGB brass. Okay. Uh, is it free floating or battened down? It's all free floating. There is no screws holding it down anywhere. It sits on top of the ballast. The ballast is uh, 3 8 chip and we get it out of Maquoketa, Iowa. Or and on this particular train here, you say you made those those train cars? You designed the vinyl and, the, and built the tank cars? I built the tank cars out of PVC pipe sections with Bachman freight trucks underneath, Bachman freight wheels. And the cars were actually main central and they had a nice uh, yellowish base color and then I uh, designed the vinyl graphics for them and I had a uh, company make my vinyl graphics for me and applied them before I put the handrails and so forth on. Okay. This is the control panel that runs all of the area away from the main, main loop one and two control. So are you DCC of some sort then? We're strictly uh, DC out of uh, Aristocraft Revolution controllers. And what all can you do with all these switch switches? These switches allow for different paths that you wanna, might want to take the train on. And by the legend down below tells you what position all the switches need to be in, which allow you to turn off certain segments and allows you to reverse the, reverse the power on certain segments so that you can either go straight loop or you can do figure eights which require that the power be reversed on certain segments. So the legend will allow you, will tell you which way the switches should be. You can go grand circle, figure eight, and you can run loop three as an independent off of this. Here's the schematic for the, uh, for the control and it shows how all the wiring is complete inside. This is the control system consisting of two power supplies. From that power supplies the radio control units operate using uh, Aristocraft or Crest Revolution for the speed controls or some of the old, D, the old train engineer controls. Then up above, it allows us to select, in case of a failure of some kind, we can bypass all the radio controls and go back down to the old standard backup of a straight transformer. It's a four channel transformer which allows us to run all four loops in case of a colossal uh, failure of some sort. It's a big one. Mm -hmm. And this is your storage shed. Just, just one of. <laughs> how, how many trains do you have? How many locomotives well, and train cars? We don't know. 
we don't know because there's we don't know how many cars we really have because it floats. I have cars I bring from home. Sean brings stuff home from home. Larry has stuff here. Do you have a layout at home too? I have a 450 foot layout at home, but uh, G scale. It, yeah, it oh. hasn't run for three years because I spend all my time here. I see. So here's the repair shop. Now this is a standard uh, shipping container, and uh, which allows us good security and safety. Uh, weather weather control. Inside the steel doors there's a wall with an air conditioner and a separate door. And uh, hold on if you part, uh, pardon me but uh, we got a train coming. What railroad is that? That's Iowa Interstate. Is that a, a branch line or I mean a, That's a uh, short line? That's a line here in Iowa. Oh is it? Yeah. So are these these tracks right outside the? These tracks here actually are uh, BNSF, and they're active. They look active. Yeah, they're they no are. rust. Yeah, there's a train comes down through here maybe two times a day. All right, all but right. It's always a little shorty, a little <laughs> short train, maybe six eight cars. And it looks like he's crossing the river. Uh, he's going over to Davenport. Okay. That there must be. You'll get a train about every half hour or an hour up there. All right. Uh, this is then our door now, our new door, takes us into our service shop. So welcome to where it all happens. It's going to be hard to get all this in because it's so narrow, but here must be where you fix them. This is the repair area, service area, lubrication area. And then over here, are these all waiting to be repaired, or are they just being stored? This is a, a combination storage and some repair stuff. Most of the stuff is is all in the operational condition. There's only a few things that are not. We also have some uh, some things in boxes here. There's a couple of starter sets down below. Uh, Yeah, we have a whole series of Thomas equipment up here. For the kids, huh? This is the military military uh, equipment. So uh, for uh, like 4th of July we run the military oh, okay. trains and so forth. More storage over there. What's, what's in this cabinet here? This is a temperature controlled cabinet that uh, if we want, we can actually close this up and put all the batteries and we can put, oh, there okay. are a number of pieces with batteries and so forth, we can put everything in here with batteries oh. or electronic control that we don't want to get cold.
right, so the cabin is a bird feeder. Yep. And, and the rocks are fiberglass. The rocks are fiberglass boulders that are used to cover gas meters and pumps and so forth in your yard and your landscape. And then, Same. I and don't that, know if you can see all the, is that all your club members' names on the graffiti on the side there? That's the uh, staff here at the uh, Botanical Center plus club members' names. Okay. What, what'd you make the water tower out of? The water tower has a history of its own, is that that water tower is actually a fuel oil filter from a 1910-1920s farmhouse where they used to have the fuel oil in a big tank out behind the barn and they'd bring the fuel oil in and drip it through the little tiny mesh filter in the bottom and a sediment bowl that used to be at the bottom and they would filter that out and then they would take the clean fuel oil and put it in their burners in the farmhouse when they converted from coal. Cool.